Hello, and welcome to Andrew Broussard Watercolors. Today, we're going to do a fast and loose watercolor landscape painting using Winsor Newton Van Dyke Brown. In front of me, I have a sheet of paper, approximately probably 8 by 15, which would be matted, if it was matted, to approximately 7 by 14. It is toned 90 pound um, Stonehenge Legion. This is my third time in the past few days playing with, I think it's actually my fourth time playing with this tube. And I just feel like I'm not happy with the composition that I'm doing with it. So let's just go for it and see what happens. I covered the paper completely with water. This tube has kind of a, um, like a semi granulation. It's not super granulated. There are granulation mediums that you can add in. Um, we're just kind of exploring the tube itself. But there's some different hues that come through. There's kind of a darker raw umber in some spots. And when lifted, there's the PR 101 that shows through, which is the uh, synthetic red or your um, burnt sienna. So I'd say about three different U's coming through. I don't usually use the word often, but I think that that's um, something I should start doing, especially since we're seeing those things as well as the different tonal values. The cats have the zoomies and they're running around. Okay, so that being said, whenever you do this technique, you're gonna use up um, some globs of paint, which is fine. I would suggest utilizing some of the cheaper student grade paints or um, the usually kind of like a series one of a pigment uh, or a brand. I believe brands will do a series one, series two, series three, and the higher the series will be more expensive. So if you don't have Van Dyke on hand, I'd say just try a burnt umber, play with burnt sienna, maybe a mixture of two pigments and see what happens. Just explore and learn what happens as you use it. Okay. Now, just the normal disclaimer of, if you wanna follow along, you can. Sign your own name, sell it if you want, you have my express permission. I'm working on shortening that disclaimer to make it nice and easy for you all. Also been working on shortening the videos and if you want to support, I have the Patreon link down below. And a huge thank you to everybody that supports. I pulled up this spot right here. It was nice and um, very wet. Uh, water was pulling into it. And that made it easier to lift. So some lifting on here. And you get that uh, synthetic red. Which I'm just avoiding it for right now. foreground as we let the scene I guess the word would be a coalesce as it comes together it's looking like I'll put reflection right in here have a water area coming through I like to do the vertical lines for reflection and then pass over with the horizontal strokes of the surface. Cat hair. And we'll play around with the rigor and probably the scraping tool 
and maybe even the razor blade. I've really been enjoying the aspects that the razor blade brings out. I'm kind of just tapping in right now, get my forms in place. By the way, this is the Ron Ratzik Hake brush. I've used it for five years. Let's see if I can bring that up. There we go. Okay. All right, so I have my scraping tool, my number one rigger. Uh, somebody had commented on a, I think an older video, asking which one was my favorite number one. And at this point, it's the silver black velvet, number one. I picked up some cheaper synthetic number ones and experimented with those. And I think it was just an experiment and then I just went back to these. So that's where I'm at. With these guys, I'm putting them in really soft and gentle. Um, whenever I'm adding in, I do want more pigment than and more less water than what's on the paper so I don't create cauliflowers but it's still soft and it's going to diffuse this helps me get the textures in starts building up the idea and I think it plays a part in my mind of just building up what I want to happen I like this spot right here where the water didn't go down And maybe even. I mean, what you climbing into, bud? So right now he's in a big old box that I have. Um, let me go get him out. I had ordered shipping tubes for one of my mail stuff out. It just kind of makes it cheaper than the. UPS flat rate tubes, but for now I have a box of tubes that I need to uh, have space for. All right, this is straight from the tube. Um, I always say that straight from the tube, you, you want to watch out because when it dries and if you get clumps in some spots, those clumps will really show through after the dry off. So. I would recommend um, experimenting and seeing how those clumps look for yourself and figure out ways that you can utilize them as a successful mean. I don't really have a video on that. That's something that I should do. But I have talked about how you can take the card or the number one rigger and you find a clump, let's just say right here, and you can drag some of that pigment away from there. You could also scrub it up and get some interesting things going on. Interesting things going on. All right. I want it darker in here for the shadow of the water. The tree on the water. Build up the darkness on this side. Build up some darker brush. Start getting some texture ideas. And you can use a flat brush, you can use a mop, whatever you want to use. So we hit another freeze down here, but this time I kind of selectively turned off space heaters so that I can use my blow dryer. So there should be no issues today. One of my previous ones during the freeze, the, the power went out from the blow dryer and or it tripped the circuit breaker and all the lights went out and all that while I was filming. And then 
after that, I just still had the urge to paint. Hammy, what you doing, bud? <laughs> the, the cats are so weird. Anyway, so I had created a whole painting. That's the part one and part two that I put up. Um, of the farm. And I used the space heater to dry it off. Speaking of which, I released part one of that onto the Patreon as a thank you to supporters. And I put the part two out publicly, and I, I like the Patreon in case people wanted to check it out. I'm just kind of guiding people towards that. Mainly since I use a lot of those funds to uh, explore art supplies. And I would like to find some more unique colors for the monochrome for y'all. Alright. Getting expressive. So I'm flattening out the paper here. The other day I was playing with the scrape marks on the back of the brush. It's a rounded edge. It does do a little bit of damage to the paper. Honestly, it seems to do more damage than the flat wide edge of a card or a scraping tool. It might be because it comes to a point and there's more pressure at that point. Just science. And that being said, it made me think of a lot of the movements in Rembrandt's self-portrait etchings. And that led me to watch a Rembrandt documentary yesterday. Or it was it two days ago. Anyhow. It was the Perspective channel on YouTube, and there's a art critic documentarian that is, I guess, popular in Britain, and he's got great stuff on that channel. And it was uh, Waldemir. Waldemir. So if you Google Waldemir or YouTube, W A L D A M E R. Um, do perspective or art documentary he'll come up and he's a really great knowledgeable presenter a little quirky but I think we like that in our presenters and we've taken a calling them uh, book reports or history report I really like the richness that we have going on here. Add a bit of interest in the sky. around the edges here it winds up becoming softer than it looks in fact with this level of moisture we might have to press a little bit harder and pull a little bit more out pressure. We actually get a little bit of the texture of the paper there. Not the crumpled aspect, but the, um, the weave. <laughs> the 
<laughs> You're just knocking everything over in the house. I guess this is what happens when I'm at work all day. Today is Saturday. Okay, that's some interesting lifting. You see I'm pulling some pigment here, moving it. Let's see if we can get some dynamic motion here. gonna do a scrape in the tree a mixture between scrape back and dark line let's do some pointed scrapes for the dark lines to read as tree trunk, uh, branches and this will be a good example of how when it dries these will pop out more and you'll see aesthetically how it looks and what you want to do over that bring out that edge a little bit you have this highlight right here so let's pause and dry it off all right so you should see the tonal shift it is still damp in some spots but I'm okay with that it's kind of more muted um, maybe cooler looking And I want to put some ideas in. The take brush is just the same before drying off, um, not rinsing or anything like that. So there's always going to still be some moisture on that brush. If you add over an area too much, you'll start having another wet and wet spot, which is fine if you would like to have that happen. I want less texture back here, but I do want some dynamicism with the tonal values. So I put some ideas in. I'm gonna look through the lens, see where we're at. Lifting back some. We could do the round scrape. And we can use the sharp scrape. Some horizontal. Give it a scrape. Let's grab the number one. Look 
looking for some sharper elements here. Just putting it in and then just doing a little squiggle for the reflection. There's been, since it's mid-January, a decent amount of trees have their leaves down here. I've been looking at a lot of those branches and how they have all these little tiny branches coming off of them. And I was thinking about how to kind of emulate that. Just draw, try light egg brush. But I want it to appear natural as opposed to all the marks in the same way. So essentially it's just kind of cross hatching with this brush. That's what we'll do at this point. Cross hashing with the hate brush. And then just lightly dab some spots, or heavily dab it, but still not getting the whole thing. Let's see where we're at. It looks a little um, all over the place through the camera, so let me do a quick dry off. Okay, hitting it with the blow dryer did tone it down some, but I feel like this area needs brush. Passing that over. Okay. Just pulling this light wash out looking for a way to just uniform it get some harmony okay, here's some strong from the tube I'm not trying to make it exactly what's up and down so that we have uni um, a little bit of, not uniformity, but a little bit of difference, um, some more randomness to it. Straight from the tube. Curling them out and over. some longer grass. I 
think that the lens, the camera, is picking this up a little bit darker than it is. Scrape out some clumps. I'm going to go back and erase it if I don't like it. pause and do a dry off. All right, I'm going to leave this one here. Uh, a lot of interesting things coming through. Uh, it doesn't show up as good on the camera as it does in person. This is a little bit lighter, so it's less harsh. And there's more of a flow. I like this paper mark here. I think that I'm going to seek that out in another painting. Maybe I'll do that in the next one. And I like this spot right here. Just that little curve with the dark above and the dark below, really getting that edge going. All right, so I'm going to stop it here. I hope you enjoyed. Please like, subscribe, follow, and I'll be back soon.